Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new and you watch it to this uh, channel, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, welcome back and an equally warm welcome to you. And if you like the weekly analysis that I provide, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow colleagues. It's a free way to kind of support the channel and get the quality content um, out to to those that need it. And before we get into our fundamental and um, technical analysis, just thought I'd go over a bit of education, fundamental education, as fundamentals is really what drives um, valuation of of anything really, not just currencies, but um, it's understanding um, what creates demand and supply, right, in, in a currency. It's not going to be technical analysis, I can tell you that, um, you know, banks don't just look at technical analysis, they look at the fundamentals behind, you know, what gives uh, an asset class its value, right, that's really what fundamentals and analysis is about. But um, in this question, in this poll that I asked about a month ago, I said if a central bank is hiking rates, uh, the demand for that currency should typically, you know, increase over the medium to long term. Is that true or false? Ninety one percent of you said true, and those ninety one percent who voted true are correct. Um, the reason why, um, again, going back to fundamentals, is because interest rates, you know, are the cost of. Uh, it can be used depending on what side you're on, whether you're the lender or the borrower. But um, in in currency land, um, interest rates are you know your your return on investment, right? They're your yield, and um, as an investor, right, you want um, uh, uh, assets to generate you high yields. And if you know you're holding, for example, U.S. dollars or British pounds, and uh, the interest rate is, for example, 2%. It means that for holding that currency, you should be getting paid a 2% return. Um, and currency uh, currency trading, Forex trading, is all about really um, com the comparison between one uh, currency and another. So when a, current, when a central bank is hiking rates, which is the smart money, right? They control, the, the, they're trying to control the valuation of a currency. When a central bank looks to high rates, right, from let's say, for example, you know, 0 0.25 potentially to 0 0.5 percent, yeah, to 0 0.5, yeah, what they're actually doing is appreciating the currency, they want the currency to get more, uh, um, um. Uh, valued right they want it to get a bit more expensive because what that does is it creates demand because the if one country is is for example like I said before is um, is is let's say for example they're at zero percent so they're not getting any kind of interest right for holding that currency and there's another currency uh, and country and central bank that is raising and high first of all they've got a higher interest rate but then they're also hiking their interest rates why am I gonna hold a currency that has you know that is not giving me a return right not to say it's not absolute not there, there's there's obviously reasons for holding um a currency that has you know zero percent depending on the environment but to simply explain it creates demand right for that currency because again investors want to return if they think that their return for holding current um, a currency is going to go higher in the medium to long term then that's going to create demand every you know uh investors going to pile into that currency and uh, it should you know typically increase over the medium to long term and the reason why I say medium to long term is because in the short term uh, price action is very uh, can be very random right and this is due to things like liquidity um, and and slippage right which uh, the banks can't trade like how we trade they have to avoid uh, slippage and they have to accumulate a lot more Right, and because of these things, um, in the short term, price action can seem very random, but in the medium to long term, you will see the direction that was intended by the uh, by the banks and the investment banks, etc. So, uh, for those of you who got it right, well done. Pretty easy question. For those of you who didn't, I guess it's your first time to uh, you know with the fundamentals, and I uh, hope that you did uh, learn something there. Uh, moving on to uh, before we again to get into. 
the uh, um, uh, the, the fundamentals and the weekly analysis. Just our approach at Trading 180 is really to establish fundamental analysis um, and our, which basically is it determines our direction and then apply technical analysis to supply and demand strategies uh, to time our trade entries, establish profit targets and overall risk management. And we sit basically right in the middle here using the best of both worlds to make the best trading decisions. So uh, moving on to this week's um, week ahead, tradingeconomics.com and the Federal Reserve and Reserve Bank of Australia will be releasing policy meetings, uh, meeting minutes in the coming week, while central banks in China, New Zealand and Indonesia will meet to set interest rates. So um, that's going to be important, uh, especially for the New Zealand dollar. They're expected to hike rates uh, this week, if not this or this in the coming week. But if they don't, then again, they will be the ones, probably one of the first ones to hike interest rates. So that's just giving you, they're telling you what they potentially are going to do. So what should you do? Again, not financial advice, but where's the probability uh, of, of the, the um, New Zealand dollar potentially going higher in the medium to long term? Again, in the short term, nobody necessarily knows, but medium to long term, you should see the New Zealand dollar um, uh, go uh, appreciate. On the economic data front, important releases to follow include US and China retail sales industri and industrial production, Canada and UK inflation data. That's going to be important because uh, inflation data will determine is one of the factors um, that uh, 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 bankers look at in order to potentially high rates or not, right? Uh, and retail trade, Japan and Eurozone, second quarter GDP updates and Australia employment figures. So there's 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 definitely some uh, a lot of uh, market moving data and important decisions to be made around monetary policy uh, for, for the central banks, depending on what happens with the data. Anyways, moving on to the uh, US dollar DXY, dollar index and with the dollar index uh, last week we did come up to this uh, this demand zone right and uh, you know we did actually you know sell off a little bit but that's just probably maybe some sort of pullback could be profit taking etc the, the question really is is, un is understanding why should the uh, the US dollar go higher in the medium to long term and if they if the Federal Reserve are continuing to look uh, to high crates, then you should really just look at any pullbacks as buying opportunities. So just looking at demand zones. So if you're looking to go long based off of your fundamental analysis, ignore supply zones. Supply zones shouldn't even come into your mind. I know traders do want to, you know, try and make money on the way up and on the way down. Um, but uh, good luck with that, I would say. Um, it's it's I think it's best to just be patient and look for just buying opportunities if you understand where the path of least resistance is. Yeah. Um, but anyways, getting into uh, um, the uh, decision as far as um, the the decision for the Fed to start tapering and tapering should again increase the um, the valuation of the currency because um, I explained it last week in last week's video so have a look there but just I guess to summarize is that um, uh, quantitative easing devalues the currency and by tapering quantitative easing you should um, you know uh, minimize the impact of your devaluation right um, so Delta variant won't impact Fed's taper plan blinder tells uh, GG, right? So the Federal Reserve will likely lift its zero interest rate policy next year as the impact of the fast spreading Delta variant has not been uh, that significant on the economy, Alan Blinder, a former Fed vice chair, told, told uh, Japanese wire services, GG Press. So that's, you know, that's quite important. Again, it, it is his uh, opinion, but he is also the, uh, the ex uh, Fed vice chair. So he knows pretty much what he's talking about and uh so so really and truly you should understand that if that's the view right again nobody knows 100 percent. it's just a probabilistic game but if that is the is the view right that that um the the, the variant isn't necessarily going to uh impact or it 
it may do, but the chances are it's unlikely to, depending on obviously the impact of it um, or the spread of it. But um, you should really look to continue to potentially buy the dollar, again, not financial advice, even though in the backdrop, we do have some risk events. And this was on the 12th, I think this was Friday. So uh, China's port shutdown raises fears of closures worldwide. So isn't that a headline? Risk off meaning that uh, there's a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt in the world. And in fact, the dollar can still can still uh, benefit and does benefit from um, uh, is a risk off currency, right? So meaning that it can benefit in times of risk off and on, right? So it's um, uh, whereas uh, there are other currencies that generally don't do well in a risk off environment. So uh, basically the story is an, a COVID outbreak that has partially shut down one of the world's big, busiest container ports is heightening concerns that a rapid spread of the Delta variant will lead to a repeat of last year's shipping nightmare. So if this does start to come true, then we could see a bit of a sell off um, in uh, uh, commodity currencies like the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the Canadian dollar, for example. Um, no one really knows how the, uh, the, the US dollar will, will, will react, but against the commodity currencies, you probably will see the dollar start to, um, start to strengthen. Against currencies like the uh, yen, which we'll get into in a sec, um, you know, uh, it, it may start to sell off, but the dollar index basically just is just used as a, again, an overall uh, snapshot of the, dollar strength against various other currencies like the, the euro, the yen, um, uh, the pound. And so you, we're just looking at this as confluent. So if prices come down into this demand zone and, and there starts to be some positive price action and you think that that's really a great place to look to buy, then look for the same kind of confluence on uh, other currency pairs if you're looking to buy the dollar. Same thing if you're looking to sell the dollar, waiting for basically pullbacks into an area of supply, which would probably be here now um, and uh, that 92.88 um, level before looking at getting short if you see some bearish price action there then look for you know sell uh, dollar trades on um, any of the dollar crosses moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen again we've seen a bit of a sell from the friday and again i think this could be simply because of the uh, the story um of the uh, of china's uh, busiest port shutting down right but um, with risk off, right? Risk off, with fear, uncertainty, and doubt, the Japanese yen is considered uh, a safe haven currency and money will flow into that currency. But I tell the traders in my private mentoring room is that depending on the risk uh, sentiment and what the event actually is, um, the uh, risk risk off sentiment drives prices to where we would want to be a buyer, right? Because let's say, for example, the um, uh, uh, in in the next couple of days, they get a grip um, on the Delta the variant outbreak. Yeah, so they you know they quarantine the the and and um, and price still still coming down, right? And then uh, they start to say, okay, we're going to reopen the ports now. The dollar looks like an absolute bargain against the uh, Japanese yen at these prices because a reopening of the ports will mean more risk on. Yeah. We mean more risk on and in a risk on environment you do not want to be buying the japanese yen you want to buy the higher yielding currency right so that's pretty much how it works so risk off can drive prices to where we want to be buyers and then look for buying opportunities when risk comes back on um so for now that's really the plan and let's see on monday whether um you know the market is kind of scared out um, and really kind of getting into um, into risk off mode and how how the impact of really the uh, China's port shutdown will, will have on the market and how long it may last for. Again, nobody knows for sure, but let's just keep our finger on the pulse. Uh, dollar Swiss. Again, similar thing I think is happening across the board where you've, you're, you're getting um, uh, a bit of a sell off on the Friday. Right, so that's supply. So again, if you are thinking to yourself, well, I want to try and take advantage of risk off, then you're looking for pullbacks into that zone there. If you're looking for a risk on um, a trade, I think the nearest demand zone is going to be all the way down into this 90s area. Um, but also as well, um, you have to uh, think to yourself, if, if prices do make higher highs, then that becomes a nice demand zone. And then that could be uh, a really nice buying opportunity. But let's uh, let's see. Um, at the moment, not, not really much to kind of say about this. Pretty similar to the 
dollar yen. Moving on to the dollar CAD. Dollar CAD, uh, two kind of strong currencies going at it. And again, I said last week that when you have two uh, strong currencies um, that are potentially looking to hike rates, you'll generally get um, a ranging market. And so this is pretty much what's happened. Uh, prices kind of caught between this high, uh, this demand zone and this supply zone. So um, I think for me, it's not really again a, a pair that I'm interested in. If I'm getting long or short, it would have to be really up into this zone here, this 127, 128 to get short. Um, or if I'm getting long, probably prefer the bottom end of this uh, this demand zone, if not down into that zone. But it's not really a pair that I'm looking to trade as uh, um, the, uh, the CAD for me. Um, they're, they're on an interest rate hiking cycle. There is obviously, obviously an opportunity depending um, on risk off sentiment because in a risk off environment, <coughs> sorry, a risk off environment, the CAD shouldn't do well against the uh, the dollar. So in fact, what you should see is is more upside, <coughs> is more is more upside on this currency pair if risk off comes into play. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Again. Um, Surprisingly, that we have a, uh, a a bullish day, but um, with the dollar potentially setting off, um, and also as well the the rumor that there is an interest rate hike coming this week on the New Zealand dollar, we uh, we potentially uh, should have prices go higher. But this could be capped due to the risk off sentiment. But for me, any pullbacks on that New Zealand dollar. I think is great a great buying opportunity, not necessarily against the dollar per se, but I just think that the um, the uh, the U.S. dollar, I'm um, sorry, the New Zealand dollar is really the uh, the one to to buy for the foreseeable future, um, and this is really due to their, them being really the first to start look, looking to um, hike interest rates and being on that cycle because once they're on the interest rate hiking cycle it can last for uh, a number of years so they're ahead of the curve they're ahead of pretty much all um you know uh, banks that we uh and currencies that we trade so um so yeah let's see what happens here bit of no man's land when you think about where we are um if you're looking to buy and we're in that range between that high and that low then um and you're looking to buy the uh the, um, sorry, the, the New Zealand dollar, then we're in a bit of an expensive area. Any pullbacks again down into these uh, uh, 0.69 areas would be really nice for a potential buy. Um, and again, if you do want to get short, I'd probably look for a short around this area here as that's a nice fresher area of uh, supply. Pound dollar. It's a pound dollar. Um, a few weeks ago, we did bounce off of this uh, supply zone. Really nice. And let's just pull this down, I think. Yeah, we've got. That area there um, again two really kind of strong currencies uh, going at it um, when it comes to uh, currency appreciation looking at the uh, the pound this week so UK growth surges but can it last so uh, the spread of a Delta variant has put the brakes on the recovery after a strong second quarter while we're not expecting a return to significantly negative growth the rise in COVID-19 suggests um, it may be still another couple of quarters before the economy has returned to its pre-virus level and this is from ING so there was some really good uh, data coming out or that came out for the uh, for the pound um, but uh, let's see what happens I mean I'm, I'm, I'm probably a bit more bullish on the pound now uh, again not necessarily against the, the, the US dollar but if you do get um, maybe a pullback into these areas here um, I say this 137 area that's actually a decent area to look for any kind of long trades if you think that the dollar should want to get stronger than any pullbacks into that zone would be a decent uh, short trade uh, for the uh, for the US um, in, in buying the US dollar but again if you're looking at, at strength and divergences meaning you know buying one currency that's strong and one currency that's weak which is what you should be doing um, there, there really is for me no no real divergence on this currency pair, meaning that um, I'm not really looking to get involved in that. Um, Euro dollar, Euro dollar's come down to a really nice uh, demand zone and uh, pretty much bounced off it, uh, pinged off the the absolute low of that, uh, and is making uh, potential highs. And again, I honestly think that from a, a divergence perspective, the uh, the, the 
divergence is with the uh, euro dollar so for example tapering talk with the US dollar and the and Europe are really kind of lagging behind when it comes to um, monetary policy so ECB's wide men uh, warns inflation may pick up faster than expected <clears throat> so European Central Bank governing council member uh, Jens Weidman warned that inflation in the euro area could pick up faster than expected and urged not to drag out the institution's pandemic bond buying program. The problem is, though, is that they're still um, really kind of below um, their their 2% target. So the ECB expects inflation to average at 1.9 in 2021, mainly re reflecting temporary factors before falling to 1.5 or 1.4 in 2022, 2023. So um, while underlying uh, price pressures uh, should strengthen the as the economy recovers. The current outlook foresees inflation well below the ECB goals. Um, ECB's goal of two percent, meaning that regardless of what this guy is is uh, Mr. Weidman is is saying, um, if you're not really if central banks aren't necessarily above their two percent target, then what is the um, the incentive to high rates? Right? Um, they just they're just reaching their goals. So. With that being said, the euro, uh, the ECB are lagging behind, whereas the US are really kind of talking about tapering and potentially hiking interest rates, right? So any pullbacks, any pullbacks into supply zones will be really kind of nice uh, uh, selling opportunities or buying for the US dollar. Although there is obviously an opportunity to get long um, on buying the euro um, in the short term, but really I think the path for these resistance is still to the downside and uh, if that level doesn't work out then that would actually still be a decent zone a decent short trade um, from this 119 to 6 area would be uh, probably the best actually uh, probably from there yes yeah, so from the uh, 3 1 area would be the better uh, zone um, to look for any kind of short trades moving on to the euro yen euro yen not really interested in this um, again, from a risk off perspective, you should expect the Japanese yen to strengthen and continue going to the downside, um, especially against the euro. Um, but I think if the euro does um, in September, October, does start to act a bit more hawkish, then that's going to be a really nice buy um, around this uh, one two eight fifty area. But as a as from a, from a currency pair trading perspective, I'm not really too interested in this currency at the moment. There is an, a nice little supply zone there or supply zone there so just look for any kind of sell trades but sell trades would come into the um, um, into understanding that you want to sell uh, this currency pair get short in a risk off environment um, Aussie dollar Aussie dollar again being in this range really tight range prices have really kind of remained between uh, this probably maybe moved what about 100 pips or so something like that within this 100 pip range yeah 110 pip range for for quite a while matter of fact since really kind of july the 22nd and we're literally august the 13th so really kind of low summer volatility trading um uh if you do want to get long i think the australian dollar is lagging behind slightly there they've got um an outbreak of of the delta variant and you know the major cities going into lockdown so if that continues you should really expect you know prices to go you know lower so any pullbacks into any kind of supply zones and you've got uh, you've got a decent supply zone right here as well <clears throat> uh, that would be a decent uh, sell trade if prices come up to really kind of like the highs of that area and looking for short trades and remember that the US dollar can benefit from a risk um, off environment if not then you're looking at this area here as for short trades but I think once the Australian economy gets going then I think this 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 area actually can be a really nice uh, buy because I do think that the Australian dollar in a risk on environment should kind of outperform with higher commodity prices moving on to the Aussie yen Aussie yen again we've had a bit of a sell-off see the analysis from last week understanding that we got support there bit of support there as prices went to the upside then came down then resistance and then i was saying last week that if you are looking for any kind of sell trades then that would be the zone and you can see pretty much what happened there um again and, and risk off has aided that right so risk off sentiment you should really want to look to buy the japanese yen in the short term if you're looking to take advantage of risk off and um and so yeah, we've seen that you know that trade kind of work out. 
Again, for me though, I'm more of a risk on person. So prices, if prices do come down to this 80 area or just below that area for me and risk on comes back into play, right? Then I think that's gonna be a brilliant buy for the Australian dollar. Um, so for the, yeah, I think that, I think I'm, um, I'll be interested in that, but I've got to see the data support the narrative, meaning that I want to see um, the Australian dollar start to really, um, you know, jobs, employment, GDP, uh, really start to uh, um, be on the up and up before I start to look to buy the Australian dollar. And finally, gold. Gold had a massive rally, I think, on the uh, quite early in the week uh, on August the 9th. So again, it pinged right off of this demand zone. It demand here demand here and then we literally have come off that moved a good um, couple of hundred um, uh, dollars from in, in in regards to gold so that and that should not be there um, we do have yeah I'm gonna keep the, the demand zone there and uh, we're pretty much in between a high and a low right meaning that if this is an expensive area for gold and that's a bargain area for gold so this high would be expensive this low would be um, known as I guess a bargain area we know that's to be a bargain because what did price do when it came down there it literally bounced off there's a whole load of buyers around here in between that is fair value so if you're looking to buy gold you're really looking for you know some sort of pullback before looking at getting uh, long if you're looking to short gold potentially with a hawkish um, uh, Federal Reserve you could see prices come up this week and then look for you know a potential sell-off um, and again just looking at uh, gold on the 12th it said gold heads for its second weekly loss as traders assess the dollar um, I don't know I think I think this is a bit maybe out of sync um, on the 12th but uh, it says gold is heading for its second straight weekly loss as the dollar advances concerns simmer uh, that the Federal Reserve could soon support uh, reduce support for the US economy so the dollar advanced on Thursday um, uh, rising inflation pressures and strengthening job market a strong dollar diminishes demand for bullion as an alternative asset so this actually this um, this price action could actually be due to more risk off sentiment coming into the market um, gold is a, is, a, is a safe haven so um, even though the dollar could be strengthening you could because of risk off you could obviously see money going into gold again so um, maybe this is being driven by more risk off sentiment rather than uh, dollar uh, weakness but either way you look at it if you're looking to potentially sell gold meaning you're buying the dollar um, this is a way of doing it if you don't want to necessarily buy the dollar, you want to sell gold, uh, looking for you know really a play back up to this supply zone before getting short. And if you're looking to uh, sell uh, the dollar and buy gold, then you're looking for really kind of pullbacks into a zone. I'd probably say this 1703 area again before looking at any kind of uh, long trades. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, I'll speak to you guys soon. Have a great trading week.